Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's going to be time for some Victoria 2 with the HFM Historical Flavor mod. We're going to be playing a new campaign. Uh, once again, let's go ahead and jump on in. <clears throat> um, before we actually start, I just want to let you guys know that I changed the resolution of the game that we are in. Um, I used to be playing in 2560 by 1440, but now we're playing in 1080p because a lot of people said they had trouble reading the, reading the UI and stuff. Which, I mean, is understandable because Victoria 2 is so old that it doesn't have a scaling UI, so no matter what resolution you're playing at, the UI will stay the same. It doesn't scale according to your resolution, so paradox, please fix. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, as you guys can probably tell from the title of this campaign, we're going to be playing as Japan. We're going to be playing as not just any Japan, we're playing as Imperial Japan. Um, we start off 60th in World for Prestige, 24th for Industry, and 21st for Military. We have a population of 1.08 million adult males, 81% farmers. 9% artisans, 5% soldiers. We are allied in a sub-state of Shogunate, Japan. Um, obviously, the game starts in the year January 1st, 1836. So, we're going to be uh, jumping in as Imperial Japan and conquering the co-East Asian co-prosperity sphere. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of Japan uh, while we're also playing. So, let's go ahead and jump on in. Okay, here we are. We control Kyoto, Kobe, and Osaka. And Shogun of Japan is over here in Edo. Edo, there it is. Yeah, so this is Kyoto, and then Edo. Edo is actually what is now Tokyo. So, Tokyo's there. Kyoto's here. This this used to be the old seat of the Shogunate and of the Emperor, but it's not anymore. Um, they're over here in Edo. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, let's go, and go ahead and go through our... Um, our user interface and just take a look at what we have. What's going on? We produce uh, tea and livestock. Tea and livestock. Okay. Let's go and raise taxes on everybody because we might need some money. Let's see. We're going to want all these spending maxed out for sure. Um, we have 40% literacy right now and we have 2.87 uh, research points per day. We have 1%, 1.04% of our population to be exact. As intellectuals, we need 2%. That's going to be optimal. Um, we right now we have we actually have a reactionary party in power, which is protectionism, planned economy, moralism, residency, and pro-military with no official welfare policy. It's actually really good. Let's go and go for um, bureaucrats here in our main state of Nippon Kansai. And what do we uh, what do we import? We import grain, glass, and cement, and we export tea and livestock. So that's cool. <clears throat> so um, just a little bit on the background of Japan. Obviously, we're in the year 1836, and we are in what is called Sakoku, which is basically Japanese for isolation or like, like, I don't know, walls, I guess you could say, like barriers. So, um, basically the Sakoku Jidai, which is the Warring States period of Japan, took place uh, from about 1545 to about 1600-ish. And at the end of the Sengoku Jidai, at the end of the Warring States period of Japan, um, there would be a new shogunate, which would be called um, the Tokugawa Shogunate which would reign basically for the next like 250, 260, 270 years from about 1600 ish, a little bit, give or take, um, all the way up until about 1868, which was the Meiji restoration. So in 1836, we are still, Japan is still under the control of the Tokugawa shogunate. The emperor is a figurehead and the shogun is the supreme military despot of Japan, but we are going to end that. Um, Historically, in 1853, uh, the United States was the general, or he's an admiral, his name is, he was an admiral, his name is Matthew Perry, not like the guy from the Friends television show, well, it's the same, same name, but Matthew Perry, he came to Japan, and he came over here to Nagasaki, and he said, open your tr country to trade, and, you know, have some trade agreements with the West, or we're going to attack you, and he had four warships with him, and the Japanese were scared, and so the emperor eventually signed a treaty of trade, with the United States and a couple other treaties with the British and the French and things would follow. And so Japan would open up, would be open up to Western influence. And from 1853 to 1867, which is a mere 14 years, Japan would modernize, catch up in Western technology, reorganize itself fundamentally as a society, as a, as a polity, uh, its economy would be reorganized. And, um, and 1867 would be the beginning of the, what they call, what's called the Boshin War. And the Boshin War was a civil war between Imperial Japan and Shogunate Japan. 
Shogun of Japan wanted to kick Westerners out and wanted them to be gone. And Imperial Japan wanted to kind of do the same thing, actually. Originally, Imperial Japan uh, wanted to kick out the Westerners and modernize for Japan and for, for its betterment. But without the help of Western powers, and there was, there was a lot of, you know, controversy and things like that. And um, Imperial Japan also wanted to reinstitute the sanctity of the Emperor. Wanted the Emperor to be the Supreme Ruler of Japan, you know, the God Emperor, rather than the Shogun. The Shogun was, was seen as illegitimate in the eyes of Imperial supporters. And so there was this huge war between 1867 and 1868. Um, supporters of the, of the Emperor would go to war, supporters of the Shogun, uh, the British and the French... Or the, the British and the Americans would back the, Imper the Emperor, and the French would back the Shogun, and eventually the Shogun would lose. And so we would have the Meiji Restoration. Emperor Meiji was the Emperor at the time, and he was, quote, quote, restored to the throne. And so he was able to kind of reel in his Imperial supporters, and he was able to guide the country in the direction of modernization. And, you know, westernizing as far as the technology, the society, the navy, the army, everything. Everything about Japan was fundamentally changed. And, um... Well, the rest is history. We know what happened. You know, the Empire of the Rising Sun, um, show of fascism, show of statism, you know, the uh, Zaibatsus, and then World War II, and then the end of World War II, and to the present day. But we'll talk a little bit about more of that, all that history later in the game. So right now we are in a civilization, so we need to, we need to modernize. Let's go and take a look here. We're gonna be we're gonna go ahead and be flexible on our trade policy. Let's see, what's our national values? Tradition. I wonder. Can we judge something else? We can embrace order. Uh productivity, autocracy be kinda cool. Quality, liberty. I think we're going to stick with tradition for now. It's got pop militancy, mobilization size, political awareness, and social reform desire to go down. Mobilization impact is 100% further. Ruling party support. Uh, we get research points modifier goes down, but that's okay. I think for now. Okay, so we have a couple of decisions. So we can overthrow the Bakufu. The time has come to restore Emperor Meiji to power. For too long has the Imperial Court uh, been forced to remain but a figurehead with central authority remaining with a tyrannical Tokugawa clan. Japan must have one ruler and emperor that can lead the nation into the future. Let us send our forces to Kyoto to seize imperial palace and set the, to set the coup in, nation, or in motion. Uh, to win this war, you must occupy Edo or white peace with the Shogun. You must not allow Kyoto and your capital to become occupied. Okay, so when can we do this? We have to have the country flag, Emperor Meiji, which will probably fire sometime in the 1870s or 18, 1860s, sorry. Uh, what is the Iwakura mission? Uh, the Iwakura Embassy was a Japanese diplomatic journey around the world, initiated in 1836 by the oligarchs of the Meiji period. Interesting. Cool. We want to do that sometime soon, hopefully. Order to expel barbarians. Since the ascension of the Tokugawa Shogun, the role of the Emperor has been confined to that of figurehead. We lead Japan, yet we do not. Recently, the leadership of the Shogun has come into question. His increasing inability to deal with foreigners in a way that shows any manner of leadership compels the Emperor to act with or without the Shogun's permission. We should send out a call to the people in our own name, demanding they rise up and throw out the foreigners that the Shogun will not. So this is this is originally how the Boshin War started, was that the Emperor and Imperial supporters thought the Shogun wasn't defending Japan enough. And so the Imperial supporters would say, the Emperor is better suited to deal with foreigners. We're going to support the Emperor, not the Shogun. The Shogun would obviously see that as a challenge to his power and there would be civil war. Eventually, once Emperor Meiji was restored to the throne, he would actually say, you know, we should actually use... The Western technology and Western society and Western arms and goods against them. We should just become like them so that we can, you know, fight them at some point or another. And a lot of people were upset by that, but at the same time, a lot of people could sympathize with that because they wouldn't—they weren't willing to disobey the emperor. They weren't going to disobey, you know, the the direction that the emperor wanted to take Japan. So, um, yeah, we'll talk more about that um, in later in, later in the campaign. This is establish the Kaitakushi. Cool. And adopt the Shinbutsu Bunri. Let's see, the Japanese term Shinbutsu Bunri indicates the separation of Shinto from Buddhism introduced after the Meiji Restoration. Ooh, interesting. All right. Okay, so we are 55% towards, 50% uh, of the way towards westernizing. We're going to need a lot of these military, um, military western reforms because we want to eventually fight the, the you know, the Shogunate. We're going to have to kick his ass, so... 
that'll that'll be something. So right now we're just gonna go at five speed five. Let's see, Sardinia Pima Restoration. Splendid isolation, nameless feature will enable splendid isolation for the UK. Yeah, sure. Colonial railroading, yeah, sure. We'll try and have a mostly historical game, I think. Okay, so we want to build an, an army and a navy. We have mostly inventory. Mostly inventory. And we can build factories, although I mean we're not we're not civilized, so technically we actually can't, but not too bad. So in our country right now, we're 100 percent Japanese, obviously, 100 percent Shinto. We've got uh some landowners, artisans, bureaucrats, intellectuals, farmers, officers, and soldiers. We are buying up some military goods currently. Let's see if we can raise tariffs a bit. See, artisans are getting choked. This production efficiency will go up slowly but surely. All right. See, are we able to get our goods? Yes, yes, we are. Yeah. So right now we're gonna be working on um, bureaucracy, but once once we're getting some money, we're gonna be pushing intellectuals pretty hard. Um, we can't we can't do anything to these powers over here. We can't conquer anybody, nothing like that. Eventually, hopefully someday we will. But yeah, we're just gonna be letting a lot of time pass for for a while. Um, we're gonna be making some money, you know, westernizing, getting some troops. Eventually, probably fighting the shogunate. Good things. Should you want our can't declare independence or anything on this guy, right? I think so. Hmm. There we go, making some money. Yeah. Excellent. Voting rights have been rescinded in Nicaragua. There we go. Yeah, bureaucracy. Good things. Excellent. Now for intellectuals. We'll keep the tariffs high for now. We're not we're not going to want them to be so high forever. We will want them to go down a bit, but you know, for now it's fine. So we yeah, we want all these reforms. All of these because those will allow us to beat the shogun when the war when the time comes for war. So we're going to want all that. And we want our literacy to go up since we're getting uh, intellectuals. We... Ooh, Mexico. Looks like the dictatorship is no longer what it used to be. We might actually do another another Mexican campaign one of these days with HFM instead of... Um, instead of with um, Concert of Europe as we did before. We'll see how it goes. Hmm. Good stuff. Is your cavalry, third Osaka inventory? I'm actually gonna lower the military spending for now. We we are going to build these troops as far as our constructions, but I'm not actually going to spend much money on the military, I think, for now. Does our spending affect our military score at all from like month to month? I don't think it does. Huh. State capitalism here. The Ascension of Queen Victoria. Let's see, um, how much do we need for reform here? Oh wow, only 5,000 research points for this, not bad. Uh, we're gonna want advanced constructions because that'll give us Napoleonic thought. Foreign officer training will give us advanced military system. 
so here, these training methods, this is going to give us some sort of unique event. I'm not sure what event, though. Nippon military event. I'm not sure what that is. It's probably just a, a modernization event of some kind. So that's going to be good. Yeah, we're going to want this this population of intellectuals in our core capital state to be like 4% or so. Or even higher, maybe. Let's see. We have uh, we have isolationism, which is, uh, which is unfortunate. Research points modifier minus 30%. Uh, we do have Rangaku, though. It means Dutch learning. This refers to the body of knowledge developed by Japan through its contacts with the Dutch enclave of Dejima. Interesting. Okay, we get research points modifier plus thirty percent. So these kind of these kind of cancel each other out. We need to get rid of isolationism. Sakoku. We have a baby boom. And we have a monthly payment. Okay. I think every month we give away a little bit of our money to our overlord. I'm not sure if it actually tells me how much. Probably likely does not. Yeah, it looks like we give him about like a probably like 10% of our of our coffers. So we can't really save too much money, which is unfortunate. I should go and put this at 50%, I think. Excellent. Excellent! These are forms. We'll go quick, I think. Oh, look at that. We actually have samurai troops. That's cool. That's cool. We will definitely want to invade Korea one of these days. That'd be pretty awesome. There's actually um, two invasions of Korea. There was two invasions of Korea. I think it was 1590... Fifteen, God, I think it was fifteen ninety two to fifteen ninety seven, and then I think there was another one a little later. Yeah, it was it was it's actually really fascinating history because um, they actually say, they say that Japan during that time was actually one of the most militarized states in the world. Um, the invasion of Korea involved upwards of 150,000 Japanese troops and Japan at that time had the most amount of firearms of any country on earth even more so than any European state um let's see spending is a little expensive here I think we'll keep these tariffs up for a bit then I just want a little bit of money in our coffers yeah it's pretty pretty interesting stuff like hundreds of thousands of troops they actually say that the, the Japanese invasions of Korea and like the whole war between the Qing and Korea versus Japan was one of the largest conflicts in world history up until that point. There actually was not a larger conflict until um, the Thirty Years War of 1618 to 1648, whereas the Japanese invasions of Korea occurred in 1592. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty crazy stuff. It's really interesting history. Um, just like, to, like they say that, you know, it, only if Europeans... Only if Europeans actually knew what Japan was capable of in that time period. Let's go for affording training methods. Nippon military. We don't need the foreign barbarians, trade, technology, or friendship. We are good on our own, and their influence will only corrode and corrupt our society. The Nippon general was quoted saying during a top military meeting, regardless of his opinion, at this time the Nippon military is under reformation to adopt more Western methods and technologies. If we have an isolationist policy, then we won't be able to fully test, research, and take advantage of the Western methods. The die is cast. Ooh. Interesting things will happen. So we're going to want foreign officer training, advanced constructions. Um, this gets us post Napoleonic thought. This gets us military staff system. Yeah, Te technically, actually, the the economic reforms actually have better 
return on investment. Um, they're more expensive though. They usually cost more research points. Like we would definitely want probably like official currencies. Uh, oh god, the foreign universities would be sweet. Administrator form would be really good too. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I want these military reforms because we need to be able to beat the Shogun in a war. That's what I'm concerned about. Not necessarily our tax. Cool. We have 5.2% soldiers. So, 81, 81 farmers. Intellectual is about 3%. That's pretty good. Mostly conservatives. Some reactionaries. Not really even a lot of liberals, though. Yeah, we're going to need... We're, we're going to probably need, like, 4% on these intellectuals. Let's see, the Opium War is occurring right now. United Kingdom, East Indian Company, and Hudson Bay Company negotiate an unequal treaty versus the Qing Empire. We should totally play as the Sikhs one of these days, the Sikh Empire. They're pretty cool. Somebody, everybody actually wants me to play as the Qing. The Qing is a little hard, actually. I might try something like Manchuria. Um, the Qing is a little difficult because they're just they're so damn big. Ugh, it's horrible. We're actually getting research points really fast. Look at this. Almost by intellectuals alone, our literacy is increasing almost by 0.1% a month. That's crazy. It's really good. Let's see. Okay, so we got two cab each for those stacks. Historically, Choshu Domain, Satsuma Domain, and Tosa Domain supported the Emperor in Kyoto, whereas the Kaga, Yanazawa, the Sendai, and... Um, well, like, yeah, actually, basically, that's what it was. Everybody in the East, pretty much everybody in the East supported the Imperials, or... Everybody in the East supported the Shogunate over here based in Edo. And then everybody in the West, uh, Satsuma Domain, the Tosa, and the Choshu supported the, supported the Imperials. And so they came together here in battles over here in Kyoto and stuff. And eventually they'd get pushed to the East. Eventually the Shogunate forces would actually come up here. And uh, they would form a new republic called the Republic of Izo. Supported by the French. And so they would hold off against the Imperials um, and try to declare independence. They were not successful. And they were not successful. The Republic of Izo. Excellent. The clergy. Daily base research points, 4.76. see, what other forms do we have? Let's see, foreign officer training. Wow, so our upper house support and our literacy makes our military reforms 30% cheaper than our economic reforms. Upper house support 13%. I wonder where they get that. Do they get that from the liberals? Where do they, where do they get that from? Hmm. I'm not sure. Administrative reform. I kind of, I actually kind of want this, this university's one. This would be civilization progress, 25%, but the research cost is 20,000 research points. That's a shit ton. 
Official currency is going to be bad. It's 11,000 research points. That's a civilization progress of 15%. There's the Treaty of Nanjing in 1843. In the wake of our defeat against the British, we have been forced to agree to a series of unreasonable demands. Firearms production, civilization progress, 20%. Transportation system, we do want railroads. That's not too expensive. That's only 11,000 research points. We do want railroads for sure. Industrial progress would be really good. Industrial construction actually gets this piston steam engine pretty good and a textile mill. That'd be pretty sweet. Maybe what we'll do is we'll take these. Foreign officer training is worth five civilization progress as is military constructions. And then we'll take just one of these texts that gives us 30% or more civilization progress. Like international debt would give us, yeah, international debt would give us civilization progress of 35%. Let's see, foreign smugglers, we'll go ahead and ignore it. Foreign universities would give us 25%. Yeah, I'm thinking international debt. It's going to be 16,000 research points. But that'll give a civilization progress of 35%. I wonder if that's correct or if maybe that's not correct. I wonder if it's supposed to be 25 and it just doesn't say so. That seems like quite a bit, don't you think? This would help us out a lot. The Experimental Railroad. That's only 11,000 research points. I could actually do, I could probably do um, one of these that costs 11,000 research points. It's going advanced constructions there. I could probably do that one and another one. That only costs 11,000 research points. That's why literacy is so damn important in this game. I'm, I swear, man, Europa Universalis 4 needs this type of technology system. Stupid. Okay, so we have quite a bit of money now, which is good. There's an Anglo-Afghan war between Afghanistan and Kiva. Brazilian war of Panamanian freedom. Interesting. Uh, we will play as Brazil one of these days, too. There's a war of British control over Kalat. So the UK, the French Kingdom, the Russian Empire, the Prussia, the United States, Austria, Ottomans, and Belgium are great powers. Put us a little bit of money. Uh, can we build mana wars? We could. Do we need them? Uh, I mean, the Shogunate has a fleet. Then again, some of these smaller guys do. I mean, we'd, we'd mostly be battling on land. That'd be my concern, is just battling on land. He's got way more brigades than I do. He doesn't have military tactics, though. We, we will, eventually. post Napoleonic Army Doctrine. Okay. Yeah, so the next reform will be officer training. For the military staff system, leadership modifier... 5% civilization progress. That only costs about 6,000 research points. And then we'll move over to some of these economic reforms. <laughs> yeah, so we should become civilized pretty quick. 
Pro it'll probably be in the 1850s. I mean, I'm hoping, I think we get an event in 1853 that's going to open up the country, which means that this uh, Sokoku modifier will go away, go away. And then we still have Rangaku as well. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Pretty sure that's what's going to happen. What if we have any good generals? Whoa! Look at that. Takashima Shuhan. 29% morale, 3 defense. Holy shit. Takano Choi. Morale, speed, attack, organization. Wow. Holy shit, dude. Asukai Iwayo. 34% morale. French Revolution, 1846. There's the French Republic. Again. Oh, check it out. There's a Baltic Union. That's weird. We'll play Sweden one of these days, too. Uh, looks like Egypt lost the Oriental Crisis. Huh. So we gain enough... We, we get a reform right now every, like, three years. Just about. At this rate, anyway. Come on, baby, give me those reforms. There's a Sonderbund war. Let's see official currencies. And I think administrative. I think we're gonna go over yeah, administrative reform and currency reform. That'll be twenty-two thousand research points in total, and we should be able to westernize after that. We're gonna get another Nippon event actually after this. Huh. Okay. We cross the A's. Dragoons and Hussars. So we've increased literacy by 10% in just about 11 years. Wow. That's pretty good. That is a feat. There's a Sicilian Revolution. The two Sicilies are trying to annex Sicily. They're going to win. The Hungarian Revolution has occurred. There's a Russian intervention in Hungary. Hungary will probably lose, unless somebody intervenes. There's the Italian War of Independence between Austria and Sardinia Piedmont. Let's see how that plays out. 1848 was a big year. The abdication, Ferdinand first. There's the uh, Wallachian Revolution.
Anarcho-liberals? They've spawned up in Prussia. Weird. So every 10 months, we get one more percentage of literacy. That's not bad at all. There's the Oregon Treaty. We have uh, the Hudson Bay Company over here. We actually, you know what? We should totally play as the Hudson Bay Company. That'd be cool. Yeah. Be sweet. Trying to declare independence or something. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Cores all over that area. Okay, so Mexico's in the sphere of the United States. There was a Mexican American War. Apparently, the Gadsden Purchase has not occurred yet. Right? Yeah. Tucson Animus. Yeah. The Gadsden Purchase will happen, so it'll be. Interesting indeed. I wish I had artillery. Damn, that'd be cool. So intellectuals are doing fine. The artisans are not. <laughs> I do want to turn down these terrorists, but our, our tax base isn't good enough anyway, so... I don't actually even think it matters. Our tax base just isn't good enough. Excellent. I think Shogun of Japan is annexing some of these little guys. Probably take that guy out, and then go off a couple of those armies. I think you got a lot of cav. Hmm. I think we'll be fine though, and take him out. We got better technology. That's what's gonna come down to is technology. That's what it always comes down to. We'll definitely take over Taiwan. Where's Ryukyu? Is he over here still? Yeah, Ryukyu's still here. We'll take over probably, um... Take over... Can we take over Guangxi? Oh, just that. Nothing on the mainland, just that. We'll try and attack for the Spanish Philippines, maybe? He's out there with the Dutch. Ooh, we want the Dutch East Indies. Yeah. We'll go and evade Siam. Oh, yeah. We're going to do all the things. Korea, obviously. They're actually pretty strong. Not bad. I'm impressed, Korea. I'm impressed. Eighteen fifty one, we got two years until Matthew Perry comes around. I wonder if we should just save up all of our points and just try and go for this international debt. I'm pretty sure this civilization progress thing, the thirty five percent civilization progress, I don't think that's correct. I don't think there's any reform that's even remotely close to that. That's thirty percent. That's a lot. The most yeah, like foreign universities is twenty five percent. I don't know, maybe we'll just try it, you know, and if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. 
I mean, that'll set us back a, a long time. I don't know. Well, not too long, I guess. And I'm definitely curious to see what it is. I mean, we'll be there pretty soon anyway. It's not going to take too long. Ooh, tariff efficiency for that. Mm. Mm -hmm. I want it, but hold off on it. I will refrain... Okay, so literacy is going up pretty quick. Not bad. Not bad at all. It's good stuff. I don't even like it. Let's take a look here. This war will happen very soon. Dun, 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 dun. Looks like a population of artisans is kind of just bouncing back and forth. Our farmer population has actually increased. That's interesting. Hmm, easy civilization progress of 10. Interesting. Let's see, shipwreck sailors. One of our coastal provinces is blessing with rumors about a strange people who were found along its shorelines earlier this morning. We can get Western influences, which is research points modifier. I'm gonna go and take that actually. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get consciousness, but I do like the research points modifier. That's gonna speed things up significantly. That's pretty good. So we got rid of our isolationism as well. Holy shit. So we got rid of Sokaku. So Sokoku. Not Sokaku. Sokoku. Okay, so we have Raganku and we have Western influences. Nice. So we get research points really fast now. Cool. Well, we don't have any um, reactionary issues. Mm hmm. I mean, this is going to be even cheaper now. We're going to be, yeah, we're generating points way quicker now. Nice. Nice. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind this administrative, administrative reform. The foreign universities would be absolutely the best because the education efficiency, but official currencies would be nice for the tax efficiency as well. Because, like, if you think about it, really, for the civilization progress, if this really is 35%, that means that instead of these two, which are about 10,000 each, we get this for one and a half times. Because this, this would be, you know, two times, one and a half times. 20,000 research points. This one's only 1,500. And we get 
more civilization progress, and we get tax efficiency. You know, this, this administrative uh, efficiency is 10% there, this tax efficiency is 5. So technically, getting international debt actually makes more sense than any other reform. I mean, if I was to change our national focus, or our national value, from tradition to something else, probably like, I don't know, I could probably change it to either autocracy or um, order, you know? Because right now we have tradition, you could easily go for order. You know, it wouldn't be that bad. That's interesting. Has this guy taken military reforms? I don't think he has. This is second opium war, the Polish War of Independence. Wow. No, yeah, so we still have better technology. We don't have any tactics, though. Hopefully this international debt thing works out. 1854. Well, I guess we haven't seen Matthew Perry yet, maybe? I don't know. That's kind of strange. He should be around here. Yeah, this campaign is initially a lot of waiting around, but that's okay. Cool. Alright. Life needs. Come on, baby. You can do it. You can do it. 14,778 research points. All right, let's hope for the best. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. This is not correct. It's not 35%, man. It was only 20%. So I knew it. So that tooltip is incorrect. That's what that was. Fuckers. All right. Well, what's the next cheapest economic reform then? Um... I knew it. I knew this one was wrong. I, th I yeah, I am almost positive that is an error with the tooltip. It's not thirty five percent. It's only twenty. Damn, that sucks. That's alright though. We're actually still we're getting we're modernizing pretty fast, so we're doing okay. And our tax efficiency just went up, so that's nice. Ooh, there's your Austro-Prussian brothers brothers war. This guy formed the North German Federation. Austria's gonna get wrecked. Oh yeah, he just got wrecked. Oh, dude. Austria-Hungary and the North German Federation. Oh, wow. Oh, Bavaria is a great power. That means that he's not sphered by Germany. Oh, that's weird. That's very strange. So that means that Bavaria needs to be attacked now by the North German Federation to be able to unite Germany. Not to mention Elsass Lothringen. Whoa. Okay, so we have a modernizing mission. So Carlos Spain. He's out with the UK, he's at war with Persia. Why are you worth Persia? Anglo-Persian War. Carlist Spain. 
I do want to try a Carlos Spain run because I think you get you get the opportunity to retake the Empire or something. I want to try that. I mean, we tried that in Concert of Europe. Try it again. One of these days. Okay, so what's the next reform we're going to take? We need one that's worth 10%. This would give us railroads. Official currencies is one of the cheapest, but so is railroads. Administrator form is also pretty cheap. It's got civilization progress at 15%. That's not bad. I don't really need the administrative efficiency, though. Um, I think actually this railroad one would be better. Experimental railroads in Osaka, Kyoto, and Kobe. Yeah. And farming efficiency and mining efficiency. Official currencies isn't bad for the tax efficiency, but... It's kind of a lackluster reform, to be honest. You spend 10,000 research points for just 5% tax efficiency and the civilization progress, I guess. But this one gives me a technology. That's a thing. And I get farming efficiency and mining efficiency. Makes more sense. Damn, literacy goes up pretty quick. I could alternatively also get one of these. These are a civilization progress of 10%. Technically, I'd be able to get these. This one's not bad. This one's clipper design and paddle steamers. Two technologies for only 7,000 research points. That's not bad at all. That is not bad at all. I think actually I might take that. That's pretty good. Because we're going to need a navy for sure. As, as the Empire of Japan, we're going to need a navy. Let's take that then. If that's 10%, that only costs 7,000 research points. All right. Wagons West. We get five prestige. We get a baby boom. Excellent. So we can order to expel the barbarians. Okay, so for this, we need to have the flag, Emperor Meiji, adopt the Western calendar, we need LA philosophy, state government, okay. Um, we're going to want idealism and empiricism for the research points. Those are super, super important. So let's take those. We can mobilize troops now. Let's grab artillery. We're going to need artillery for this. We're still technically a sub-state of... We're still technically a sub-state of... Um, Sugar to Japan, but that won't be for long. We will go to war soon. There's an Indian rebellion against the Mughals. And let's start building some, um, let's build some factories. Let's build some factories. Let's see, what do we have here? So we have tea. Hmm. We have tea in Osaka and Kyoto. We've got cattle here, livestock. We can build a canned food factory. There's the end of the East Indian Company. Okay. So administrative spending and military spending are at absolute max that we can do. Okay, so we got a few years to prepare for the Boshin War. Sounds good. We'll build a few factories in the meantime. I think I'm going to build a... a cannery here. We do need steel, though. Glass would be pretty cool. Cement. Yeah, like some of these basic cement glass factories and stuff would be pretty good. A textile mill.
We have enough, uh, we have enough literacy for craftsmen and things like that, so that's good. Let's do some men factory. We'll do like basic factories for now. A winery would be pretty good. Uh, Clipper shipyard might be not a bad idea. A winery for sure would be pretty good here. Yeah, we'll probably build a Clipper shipyard. Well, uh, maybe something a little better. Yeah, like maybe. Ooh, an ammunition factory pretty nice. I'd like to build a steel mill here. A steel mill would help us out with ammunition. We need sulfur though. We don't have any sulfur. A clothes factory needs textiles. I can do a textile mill with some clothes. I won't be too bad. These are like basic, basic consumer goods. We need fertilizer. Um, we might need that for. Oh, we need sold for small arms. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll build a steel mill and some more military good oriented structures in Kyoto. But we're gonna hold off on that for a second. Do we have any capitalists? We do. We do. We have a couple. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, nice. Nice. Clerks and craftsmen. Good things. Yeah, why is my base tariffs at 95%? I'm not actually sure. I don't really, I don't really want to starve the factories. I mean, we are subsidizing them, I guess, though. Okay, we got our research points there. All right. Yeah, those philosophy texts are pretty good. You know, canteen idealism. Basically, there's a lack of coal. Yeah, there's a lack of goods on the market. Probably because we do not have, uh, we're not, we're not high enough in the buying order, most likely. Which is interesting. I probably should have saved some points for this empiricism tech. Yeah, it's alright. 1859, we should be seeing the motion war here pretty soon. Alright, well, in the meantime, guys, I'm going to take a quick break here. Uh, it is the year 1860, so we've gotten, we've gotten by about 25 years. Um, this is going to be an awesome campaign, I think. We're well on our way to becoming a world power, for sure. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks so much.